What's up, diggity dogs? You're watching Fugitive Red Eye, and welcome to another episode of Red Eye Responds. Not too long after the previous one for once, so isn't that something? Uh, but today we'll be doing a response to a video by a guy by the name of Expo Paradigm Gamer. Uh, he's actually pretty cool from what I can tell based on this video, which admittedly is the only video of his that I've seen. And this is actually a fairly well put together video. Uh, apparently he does a series called Remake or Rebreak, where he determines whether the remake of something or the original is better. Uh, and in this video, he tackles Conker's Bad Fur Day vs. Conker Live and Reloaded. Now, Conker's Bad Fur Day is my favorite game of all time, and Conker Live and Reloaded is a very close approximation to it. Um, because it's obviously a remake of it. And there are a lot of differences, however. That said, I actually agree with a lot of this guy's points in this video, but there's a few that I disagree with. Um, as far as the idea behind Conker's Bad Fur Day and Conker Live and Reloaded, they're both excellent games and both have a reason to exist, and I've played both multiple times. Uh, but I'll get into that, I'm sure, later, because I love both those games, and I'm sure we'll get into that a little later. Um, but anyway, let's, let's hear him out. Uh, take it away. <laughs> what? What better game to test out the N64's graphical prowess than Conker's Bad Fur Day on the Nintendo 64? And while we're looking at that, we might as well look at Conquer Live and Reloaded on the Microsoft Xbox. Alright boys, here we go. Looking at the best game on the 64 and one of the better games on the Xbox. Both excellent games, and as I said, both have a reason to exist, but let's hear them out. Now, this is a remake that not a lot of people seem to like. I yeah, there's a lot of people who uh, get hung up on one or two things, which we'll get to a little later, that I think is kind of stupid to get hung up on. Uh, because I think it's actually an excellent remake, and a lot of people overlook it because of one or two problems that it has. But yeah, I do think it's kind of a shame that a lot of people don't like it. Conquer the Squirrel, who's named after the horse Chestnut, by the way, made his first appearance in 1997's Diddy Kong Racing on the N64 as part of the playable roster. Developer and gaming legend Rare Limited soon after announced that Conquer would go on to star in his own N64 adventure. Conquer's Quest, later known as 12 Tales Conquer 64, was slated to be a 3D platforming game in the vein of Super Mario 64 or Banjo Kazooie. When critics previewed the early builds of the game, however, the game was supposedly criticized for being more of the same kitty fair that characterized Rare's gaming lineup at the time. Series creator, artist, and producer Chris Siever then approached Rare co-founder Chris Stamper and pitched the idea of completely redesigning the game to target a mature audience. That That is an excellent description of the game, and I felt that all of that was relevant, so I left all of that in. Uh, because I do think it is good to have some context on Conquer for those who might be a little bit less familiar with the origins of it. Meanwhile, Conquer would make his solo debut in 1999 in Conquer's Pocket Tales for the Game Boy Color, and I have done a couple of streams of Conker's Pocket Tales. I think it's a very fun and somewhat frustrating game, but I think it's a fun one to play on the Game Boy. And I do plan to stream more of it in the future. Which seems to have a mixed reputation as far as I can gather. The yeah, it definitely does. Some people hate it, others love it, and a lot of people don't even know it exists. The retold Conquer game was eventually revealed as Conquer's Bad Fur Day, which later hit Western store shelves in spring of 2001. So I'm not sure why it has to cost $70 to get a cart now. Yeah, I know, the prices on it have soared. Um, there are actually reproduction carts now you can buy if you want to buy it cheaper. Um, you gotta look out for those because there's a lot of those on eBay that don't tell you they're reproduction carts, but they're like 20 or 40 bucks. Um, but, um... Yeah, original cartridges tend to be expensive. I got it for 20 bucks years ago, so I got lucky on it. But there also is a much more affordable way to get the game, which I know you'll get to later because I have watched this video before. Perceiver was supposedly ready to begin work on a direct sequel, Conker's Other Bad Fur Day, which would have picked up soon after the events of the first game. The story was all written up and the game was ready to enter production, but... I'm sure you all know what happened next. In 2002, Rare changed ownership from Nintendo to Microsoft, who had recently entered the console market with the original Xbox. The story behind this is complicated, and I'd prefer not to spend too much time on it. Suffice it to say that Microsoft and Rare had some creative differences right out of the gate, and Conker's other bad fur day was eventually retooled into a full remake of the N64 original with an emphasis on online multiplayer through Xbox Live. Hi, future Red Eye here, but there was actually also another game that I forgot to mention that was a stepping stone in the middle uh, called Conquer Gettin' Medieval that would have been a multiplayer-only experience. Uh, I found out about that because of Rare Replay. That tells you a little bit about it. Uh, but I didn't mention that before, but that was another stage after they decided not to do Conquer's Other Bad Fur Day. That was the next step they were going to do was Conquer Gettin' Medieval, but that never happened either. 
Yes, that is all accurate, and again, I had to leave that all in because it is relevant. But there is one key detail he missed. Prior to Live and Reloaded being the version that we got, there was going to be a, another version of Live and Reloaded known as Conquer Live and Uncut that was going to be completely uncensored and was going to just have a straight port of Bad Fur Day for the story mode, but completely uncensored and with a new multiplayer. The fact that it would, it would have been completely uncensored will be very relevant later on. For the sake of review, I'd like to address the whole Microsoft ruined Rare thing right up front. I'm not really here to debate the specifics because that doesn't really matter to the topic at hand. More to the point, I would personally agree that such a fall from grace did occur, despite a few decent to good games coming out since 2002. I'm glad you also enjoy Grab by the Ghoulies and Cameo. I figure that I find those to be two very underrated rare games, so I like that you're giving those some appreciation. When you look at what's going on nowadays with Banjo Kazooie and Conquer and everything else, it's clear that Rare and Microsoft have no idea what to do with them. And I. Yeah, and uh, everyone hated Young Conquer. And you know, it actually came out, but like nobody knows that it fucking did because everyone hated it and nobody has a fucking HoloLens. But it does exist. I've seen people do playthroughs of it. And I didn't know it was out until about a year ago when it was, you know, it came out a couple years ago. So it just kind of went under the radar after that first horrible trailer. And as for Banjo Kazooie, yeah, Nuts and Bolts is bad. Um, but it's not that bad. It has a little bit of redeeming qualities, but it's definitely not, you know, what it needed to be. And it definitely was a big kind of fuck you to fans. Uh, but I do think for a car game with Banjo-Kazooie in it, it's decent. Future Red Eye again. Don't know how much I'm going to be doing this, this video, but I'm just adding in a few things in editing that I forgot to say in the initial recording. Uh, but in addition to Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, there was actually two other Banjo-Kazooie games that were released after the acquisition by Microsoft. Those being Banjo Pilot and uh, Banjo Kazooie Grunty's Revenge, which were both on the Nintendo Game Boy Advance, so somehow the Nintendo still got to do those ones. But Banjo Kazooie were also playable characters in uh, Sega All Star Racers, specifically the Xbox 360 version. Uh, and then Banjo Kazooie would later go on to be in Smash Ultimate, uh, but that was not until years after this video came out. I would have preferred a direct sequel to Conker's Bad Fur Day over a remake just as much as anyone else. That said, my feelings on Microsoft or the once possibility of a direct sequel are irrelevant as to whether Conker Live and Reloaded itself is a good remake or not. Yeah, I agree. I definitely think that there should have been a sequel rather than a remake, but I actually do think Conquer Live and Reloaded is a great game as well, and again, we'll get into that a little later. But oh, as always, I'm committed to giving both versions of this title an honest and thorough review, because that's just what I do. And I think that's the most fair and concise way to do it. Before I go any further, I want to make it clear that I will be spoiling this game rotten. Yeah, so there's your spoiler warning from him. If you own an Xbox One, then Rare Replay is an alright option for playing the N64 version. Th and there it is. There is the most affordable way to play Conquer. So, buy Rare Replay if you want to play it, because it's very cheap. It was a $30 game when it came out, and it it's only gotten cheaper since then. Another thing that is worth noting, however, is that Live and Reloaded, I do believe, is actually backwards compatible on Xbox One as well, so you can play it on an Xbox One, if I recall correctly. That said, I do opine that there is a preferable version out of the bunch, and the answer may surprise you. And we're gonna have some mild disagreements on that, however, that we will get to that in due time. One night, while partying with some conscripts at the local pub, Conquer the Squirrel has a little too much to drink and gets himself lost while trying to find his way home. Waking up in a strange land, Conquer now vies to find a way out and reunite with his girlfriend Barry. Along the way, he crosses paths with a menagerie of strange creatures and gets himself into an assortment of outlandish situations. On paper, the story for Conquer's Bad Fur Day is very similar to that of Alice in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. I think that's a pretty apt comparison, which I would have never made if it weren't for this video. I Honestly, Chris Seaver and Robin Beanland deserve an award or something, because the writing in this game is absolutely incredible. Couldn't agree more. As I said, there's a reason it's my favorite game of all time. If you like scatological humor, then I've got great news for you. Conquer is full of blatant, lowbrow, poop and fart jokes, and I absolutely love them. A Yes, it absolutely is. Uh, and they're funny, too. It's not like just stupid lowbrow humor. It's actually funny lowbrow humor. However, there's a little bit of, like, cleverness to it, too. But I would say it is mostly lowbrow humor. And references. Of course, the toilet humor is only the tip of the cockamedic shiteberg. Conker runs the gamut of oblique movie references, innuendos, fourth wall breaking, and meta humor. 
Well, there we go, yeah. He touched on that. They do have a variety of humor, so it's it's not just one thing, and that's what makes it wonderful. Beyond the humor, however, Conker's Bad Fur Day is really violent. Several characters get blown up into a million gory pieces. Others get ground up into a bloody pulp. Still more are brutally devoured by dinosaurs. The list goes on. Yeah, there is absolutely a reason that Nintendo made them make the M on the box bigger than the M rating on any other box, because it was considered, like, the cream of the crop in being over the top at the time. Come to think of it, there's a lot of moments in the game where you flat out murder people. Oh yeah, there's a lot of fucked up shit you do in this game. And it really gets you thinking about how murderous platforming mascots are when you stop and think about it. Well, I mean, yeah, think about it this way. Goombas are usually just walking around doing their own thing, and then you squish them to death. So, I mean... Yeah, Mario's just as guilty. On top of all that, Conker's Bad Fur Day is a wonderful tribute slash parody of the cutesy platforming genre, as well as a snapshot of gaming in the late 90s. Yeah, that's another thing I love about the game, is it's kind of a satire and self-parody of the platformer. The game also pokes fun at every genre from horror to racing to first-person shooters. And I would say the first-person part that you said is very understated because it's mostly a third-person shooter, but you can zoom in, so I'll grant you that. Conker's Bad Fur Day is among the most technically advanced games on the system. The cartridge stores 64 megabytes of data, making Conker one of the largest games in the N64 library. And yet, if I'm not mistaken, unlike Donkey Kong 64, it does not require the expansion pack. I could be wrong because I've always had it, but I don't think it does. Like most most of Rare's classics, Conquer brandishes a cartoony aesthetic that hasn't aged a day. The texture work takes advantage of the N64's characteristic brand of bilinear filtering to create some convincingly depth-filled textures that hold up surprisingly well even when the game is up to HD. The oh yeah, the graphics hold up really well. I love the way this game looks, and the way every Rare game looks. Conquer is also fully voice acted, which is unique for an N64 game, and it's surprisingly well done for what it is. Yeah, it's uh, it's one of the few that actually had fully voice acted cutscenes in it, uh, and I will say a vast majority of the game is cutscene, so that is good. And like, I'm not going to pretend it's not. Um, there's plenty of gameplay, but there's a lot of cutscenes. However, there's only like three voice actors in the whole game. Chris Sieber does like most of the male voices, except for like a couple that are played by the guy who played the Great Mighty Pooh. Uh, and then, like, all of the female characters are played by, uh, the girl who plays ba Barry, and I can't remember her name either, so apologies on that. Almost all the voice work comes from Chris Seaver himself. And well, there we go, he literally just mentioned that. While you can tell that it's just the one guy doing it all, you also get a pretty consistent performance that goes a long way in selling the comedy. And yeah, and he does give the characters each their own kind of unique, uh, you know, speaking pattern and things like that. So he does a good job at making them different enough, even if a lot of them do sound almost identical. At any rate, Chris Seaver does a better job than actors in a vast majority of games at the time. Yeah, I think Conker does have really good voice acting. By the same token, the soundtrack is also quite impressive for an N64 title. Yeah, I absolutely love the Conker soundtrack, completely in agreement. My only gripe with the presentation is that, like with many N64 classics, Conker is prone to notice noticeable frame drops. There are times where I swear the frame rate drops to 20 FPS and just chugs. I'd be lying if I said it adversely affected the gameplay, but it certainly doesn't help in some situations. Yeah, I could see that as a problem. When I was younger, I never noticed it, and even now, it's, like, not really that big a deal to me, but I could see why that would bother some people, especially newer gamers. So, I'll bet you're wondering how the Xbox version stacks up in terms of presentation. Overall, I'd say it's a nice improvement, subject to a few caveats. I mostly agree, but we'll get into that as we go on. There's gonna be a couple of areas where I do disagree with him, but again, I mostly agree. Ivan Reloaded does look phenomenal. First off, the graphics have obviously been remade from the ground up, and it's a monumental improvement over the original on the whole. In I agree. As much as I love the graphics on Bad Fur Day, I can't dispute the graphics are objectively better on Live and Reloaded, and they do have the same kind of charm and a charm of its own. I do think that the graphics on Bad Fur Day are better in some instances, but we'll get to that as we go on. In fact, if it wasn't for the standard definition video output, Conquer Live and Reloaded could pass for an early release Xbox 360 title. Yeah, I would say it does look really good for an Xbox game. Um, but one of the areas where I do think that it does fall a little bit short is I feel in some areas they made things more cartoony than they were, and that's not necessarily a negative. I do think it fits the aesthetic of Live and Reloaded more. Uh, but there were certain things that they definitely did make more cartoony, which were already cartoony to begin with. Um, and that's not really a problem, because again, I do think it fits the aesthetic more. 
it's a personal it's a matter of personal taste and there are some aspects i like better in bad fur day but again i do overall agree live and reloaded has way better graphics and looks a hell of a lot better the fact that conquered live and reloaded can even maintain a consistent 30 frames per second is more than i can say about fable or halo 2 or the n64 original for that matter well, so there you go. I mean, frame rate can be a, a deal breaker if it's really bad. So I do think that it definitely does improve on that drastically over the original. So uh, there you go. The new character models look pretty good on the whole, and the addition of real-time fur rendering is a nice touch. The environments have also seen a nice improvement, with some of the nicest water I've seen in a sixth generation video game. Yeah, once again, the graphics look spectacular. And again, the character models are one of the areas where, for me, some are better in the original, some are better in this one. But overall, Live and Reloaded does have better design. It does look better. As I said, I'm not going to dispute that, even though I do tend to prefer Bad Fur Day for a few different reasons. Similar to the N64 original, Conquer Live and Reloaded has some of the best texture work on the system, and Pooh Mountain has simply never looked more majestic. Compare these to the environments in Halo 2 and the blurry textures in most PlayStation 2 games, and Live and Reloaded clearly wins hands down. Yeah, again, the graphics in this game are actually really underappreciated because, again, people tend to just focus on one or two problems with the game and not give it a play, which I think is a horrible mistake if you're a Conker fan. All these elements together go a long way in selling the updated art style. It strikes a fine balance between realistic and cartoony. See, I would agree for the most part, but again, I do think they did make some things a little too cartoony and live and reloaded for my liking, but overall, it's not that big of a deal. Also on the topic of tweaked art direction, the spooky chapter has undergone a complete design overhaul. Not only does Conquer Donna Van Helsing outfit, which is fitting, but the grungy river is replaced with a giant pool of blood, and the grotto has become a quiet village. Personally, I like the new direction a lot better. Yes. I will say this right now, and it's not just on graphics. Literally everything about Spooky is better in Live and Reloaded. Live and Reloaded Spooky is the definitive Spooky. It is fucking fantastic. The music has been updated, the, you have a little costume now, the gameplay plays a hell of a lot better now that it plays more like an actual third-person shooter instead of having that weird C-stick thing where you move around and the, the aiming is much more, like, well-defined. Live and Reloaded excels in the gameplay as far as the shooting mechanics, and, and Spooky is one of the most notable areas where this happens. Conquer also dons full army regulation attire for its war. Yes, and I would actually say for the most part the war chapter is better in Live and Reloaded too, but there's a few little gripes I have with it, but overall it is better. Now, that said, there are a few niggles I have with the graphics. For one thing, was it really so much to ask for fully articulated eyes? With the exception of Booga the Nut, the Panther King, and Conqueror himself, every character in this game has eyes that are textured onto their heads rather than dedicated eyeball geometry. Yeah, I do agree that that is a minor gripe, but I do think that uh, it's something that a lot of people probably wouldn't even notice, because uh, I didn't uh, my first few times playing it, so it wasn't really that big of a deal. It's really noticeable how every character seems to stare straight ahead and never move their eyes. Again, when you point it out, it definitely is, but I didn't notice it when I was younger. In fact, the remake actually removes a bit of eye articulation from the abuse of Cog, who otherwise has better facial animations here. Yeah, I mean, that is kind of a shame to remove the motions there. I do agree with you on that. That's kind of dumb. Also worth mentioning is the cow model. Oh my god, what's wrong with your face? The body looks pretty good and has real-time fur and everything, but the face just looks unfinished and it's really distracting. Third, the blood effect in the Don Weasel scene looks worse than the original. And Again, these are all excellent points. Again, these are not big deals for Live and Reloaded, but I do agree these are areas where Bad Fur Day was better in the graphical department. Fourth, the lighting can sometimes flake out, even on the main menu, though that could be my console. Most egregious, though, is the use of pre-rendered textures to disguise the passages between game environments. This is mostly done in the front half of the game, and maybe it looks more convincing on a CRT, but I honestly think the plain black in the original looked a lot better. For the most part, however, when you're just playing the game like normal, none of the stuff is really all that noticeable. Agreed. A lot of it does just kind of go past you and you can just kind of, you can just kind of, you know, wave it away. Which is why I still think the graphics in the remake look better than the originals on the whole. Again, as far as graphics, I agree with you. Moving on to the presentation, it also has a few problems. One positive is that for the most part, the voice acting uses the same recordings from the original game, only before they got hyper-compressed to fit on a 64 megabyte cartridge. So what you get is the same voice acting you loved in the original, except not in potato quality, which gets a thumbs up from me. Nothing around here, hurry boy! No. I'm from the 21st century. 
I'm not from around here. Hurry, boy. No, I'm from the 21st century. There are a handful of new lines included, such as this new scene with the gargoyle in the hungover chapter where you can tell Chris Seaver forgot how to do the voice. If you think you're coming this way, you can think again. A frying pan. You stupid little t But that constitutes maybe 1% of the dialogue. I Still, despite the fact that the changes in dialogue are minor and aren't that big of a deal, it is kind of jarring when they're talking with the original audio and then the voice drastically changes for a couple of words. So I do still think it's something that's kind of frustrating, but again, also not a deal breaker. I do have one other thing to mention in this regard, but I'm going to save that for later. Trust me, I'm not forgetting it. The Yes, I know exactly what he's talking about, and it's something we'll get to in due time, but it is one of the areas where we're going to disagree. But it's also an area where I think players get way too hung up on, because it's not as big of a deal as it could have been. Animations tend to rank up at the top complaints about the remake, and I'm kind of wishy-washy on them myself. For the most part, it's one-to-one -one with the N64 version, warts and all. Almost like they just carried over the same motion capture data from the original. There are a couple moments where it looks a bit better, like the lip sync on the abusive cog, and a couple moments where they just change it to something a little bit different, but there are very few moments where the animations look noticeably worse than the original. Yeah, I never thought that the animations were particularly bad in Live and Reload, I thought they were fine. That said, seeing as this is a 6th gen remake, I feel like there's reason to expect a little better here. I mean- And I'd say that that is also fair. So really, I'd just say the animations are middle of the road. They're not the best ever, but they get the job done. And I'd agree with you, the animations are serviceable at best. They're not like anything to write home about, but they do the job. When it comes to the soundtrack, however, the remakes got the original beat pretty handily in my opinion. I like the original tracks a lot, but Live and Reloaded remixes them with real instruments and it's A plus stuff. All the swing tracks from the original game, like Windy, really benefit from the authentic big band instrumentation. And all the area-specific remixes sound loads better, too. Again, I mostly agree, but when we get to, like, the Great Mighty Pooh, I disagree, because I think they made him, like, too echoey and weird. And not to mention the fact that it's bleeped out, which, again, we'll get to that a little bit later. Um, but, uh, the echoey weird effect I already don't like, even when it's the uncensored version that got released online. So, the Great Mighty Pooh, I think, sounds worse in Live and Reloaded, just because of the weird echoes. Although the instrumental is better. You know, another thing I forgot to mention... Uh, interesting little tidbit about the Great Mighty Pooh specifically. Uh, a lot of people would refer to him as the Beast of Pooh Mountain. Um, the song itself is actually called Slaprano. Uh, but they call him Beast of Pooh Mountain simply because that's what he's called in the manual of the game for some reason. I don't know why, because he very clearly addresses himself as the Great Mighty Pooh. But for some reason, the manual calls him the Beast of Pooh Mountain. So there you go. Surf Punk sounds absolutely incredible with real instruments, and it has the N64 track beat by a country mile. Yes, I 110% agree, because Surf Punk's is easily the best song in Live and Reloaded. Um, particularly the remix. Um, so although I agree with you, I am going to point out one thing you did neglect to mention. There are two versions of Surf Punks in the game. One that's closer to the original, and then the one that's remixed and is way cooler. The remix version plays if you die and then play it again, and then it'll just cycle through every time you die and switch back and forth between the two. Uh, and the remix is fucking fantastic. It's easily the best song in the game. He does go on a little bit more about the music, but like I said, we're mostly in agreement. The soundtrack is way better in Live and Reloaded, so we, I think we get the idea. So, with all that said, let's move on to the gameplay at last. Let's get this out of the way right now. The late 90s and early 2000s were the golden, or perhaps dark age, of genre busting and mascot platforming games. Crash, Sonic, Spyro, Sly Cooper, you name it. Gameplay styles up the wazoo. I have no problem with genre busting in itself, because it really depends on how well executed the gameplay styles are in their own, and how well they mesh together to form a cohesive whole. For the most part, I feel like 
the titles I mentioned do a good job of fleshing out core gameplay and focusing the variety in constructive ways. I'm not so sure I can say the same about Conker's Bad Fur Day. The thing about the gameplay in Conker is I do admit there are some shortcomings to it, but I do think that he does get a little harsh here, and we'll get to that in a minute. But I think that the gameplay is actually pretty good. Um, I enjoy it. I'll admit that it's not exactly drop dead. It's not the best thing in the world. But again, you don't play it just for the gameplay. You play it for the story and the humor. Uh, but the gameplay is fun. I still have a great time playing Bad Fur Day. But I also have a great time playing Live and Reloaded. And I will say Live and Reloaded is a lot smoother in a lot of areas. But again, we'll, we'll get to it as we go on. Though supposedly the core of the gameplay, Conquer has surprisingly little platforming in it. Most Yes, I'd agree it does. It doesn't have a ton of platforming, so I mean, that is a fair criticism for a platformer. But again, it is kind of a self-parody, and it's more about the humor and story. But, go on. Most of the really involved sections are in the first half, and after that it becomes really understated. The platforming in the Banjo-Kazooie games is about on the same level, but that game backed it up with other consistent threads such as the completionist aspect, the speedrunning potential, the exploration factor, and the ubiquity of Banjo and Kazooie's moveset. Yeah, I will say gameplay-wise, Banjo-Kazooie is actually a better game gameplay-wise, but again, I still like Conquer more because of the humor, the story, and the gameplay all combined. Again, it's a combination of things that make it my favorite game. But I will say that's kind of the point of Conquer is it was cutting back on collectathons, because again, they were trying to do something different because they were criticized for 12 Tells just being more of the same, as you mentioned earlier. And for clarification with that, I'm saying Banjo-Kazooie has better gameplay, but the three combined for Conquer just makes it better to me in that regard. Conquer, unfortunately, lacks any analogous focused threads because it's always jumping from one gameplay gimmick to another. That, and it's got a few problems that further hamper the core platforming. For some reason, Conquer can't jump down from even the slightest of heights without incurring touch damage. I'm aware that fall damage is pretty common in many 3D platforming games, but Conquer's fall damage is by far the most sensitive I've ever experienced. I think that's a fair criticism. The fall damage can be pretty egregious. The problem is that Conker loves making you climb vertical platforming sections with no easy way to get back down. While the sections themselves can be a lot of fun to scale, you're then forced to choose between slowly climbing back down the way you came, or jumping straight down and hoping you tank the hit. Yeah, that's true, it does add a layer of difficulty, especially in areas like Cog's Tower, which is what you're showing here. The second problem is the camera. Like Banjo-Tooie, it offers full camera rotation rather than that snapping angle nonsense from Super Mario 64. For wide open areas, it works pretty well, but the preset angles can be problematic. In Clang's Lair, for example, you have to hide from these robotic sharks in these little alcoves, but because of how the camera is oriented, you'll never know when the coast is clear because you can't see the sharks. There are other... In fairness, most games of that era had way worse cameras than Conker did, but I'll also say this about Clang's Lair. Uh, there is another way to tell that the sharks are nearby. They make noise. That makes it a lot easier to tell. So I do think you're kind of overlooking that, because it's not just a matter of seeing them. You can hear them when they're near you, too. And then you do see them go past. So, I mean, I don't think it's as big of a deal as you're making it out to be. Occasional camera snafus sprinkled throughout the game. And while it never amounts to much more than a slight nuisance, it's still a way the game has aged. Sure, but I would say the camera thing again is more of just a product of its time. I know I'm getting kind of negative right out of the gate, but that's because there's so little overtly positive for me to talk about gameplay-wise. Well, I don't know, I can say some positive things right now. Uh, there's a lot of variety. It does have a decent amount of platforming. Again, it's very understated, but I think that it's fine. Uh, there's the shooting and stuff, which we'll get to a little later. I know you're going to cover that in a bit. But I do think that overall, the variety is what really makes it so unique and fun. None of this gameplay is horrible or anything. Most of it boils down to a bunch of dull, plodding, repetitive fetch quests that just amount to mindless busy work. Welcome to the world of 3D platformers, man. One of the first sections in the game involves grabbing these cheese guys and feeding them to this mouse. You have to bring him three of these, and the mouse and the cheese are always in the same place every time, and it's not even all that challenging to dodge these hopping boxes. And that's pretty Pretty much what the majority of the game amounts to. Grab the thing and bring it to the other thing. While I do think that that is a fair criticism, I think that that's a little bit of an exaggeration. I think that there is enough variety to mix it up from there, because again, there's like the turret sections, there's the, you know, on foot uh, gun sections. Again, this is all later, and I know you're going to get to that in a moment. Uh, there's the bat level. There's the um, swimming aspect. So again, I think there is a little bit more to it than that. I do understand the criticism, but I do think it's a little bit of an oversimplification. 
There are also a couple of escort missions, which are equally as slow and boring, like slowly walking this dinosaur across this walkway as he stops to eat a caveman every five seconds. Again, a fair criticism, but I think that that also does give credence to my thing when I say there's a lot of variety. These escort missions are not exactly the worst thing in the world, and there's only a couple of them. A lot of the other sections are more interesting mechanically, but similarly boil down to a boring, repetitive slog. Again, I disagree because of the variety involved. There's many different gameplay styles put into the game. Again, I think that's, again, a horrible mischaracterization and oversimplification. Take the section with the bowl, for example. You let the cow out, climb on the bowl, hit the cow, let her drink, then hit the cow again. Rinse and repeat. Yeah, but it's a boss battle. In games, boss battles are usually repetitive. That's kind of the point. So I think that that's kind of an unfair criticism, and again, it's different than any other part of the game, so I think that that's fine. How about the Colosseum section, where you ride a carnivorous raptor? I'm not sure how they managed to take something so awesome and make it dull, but they succeeded. The no, I think raptor food is fine. You go around and you eat the cavemen. Again, it's different than any other part of the game, and it's fun. I, I, I disagree wholeheartedly. Again, I do agree it's kind of repetitive, but again, it's just one section of the game that is repetitive of itself. It's not like you do this throughout the whole game. The bosses are all kind of the same deal. Most of them are like the bourgeois big ball boiler. Lead him into the pad, dump the crap on him, hit him in the balls, rinse and repeat. He does no, absolutely none of the bosses are like that. He's literally the only one like that. So there's the great mighty Pooh, who you throw toilet paper in his mouth and then you flush him. There's the fire imps who you piss on, who you fight just before that guy. There's the bull, which you already mentioned, you lead into the targets and then have him ram the other cows. There's uh, Booga the Nut, who you have the raptor bite him and rip off chunks of his ass. There's Heinrich the Alien, which you fight using a robot suit that is similar to the one in Aliens, because it's a parody. So no, none of the boss battles are even remotely similar to each other. I have no idea what the bleeding fuck you are on about right now. Other bosses at least try to add extra hits or new attacks, but it's not nearly enough to make them challenging or all that interesting. See, I hear you saying that, but they're not really all that similar to each other. The point he's trying to make, and I did cut out a little bit of it, is he's saying that the bosses don't really change as the battles go on, they just continue to do the same thing. And while I do think there is some truth to that, I, again, he's contradicting that right here by using examples of the bosses adding new attacks and things like that, so... Mediocre bosses are hardly the most offensive thing a game can do, but when the core gameplay is already so repetitive and drawn out, the lack of fun boss battles doesn't really do conquer any favors. See, again, as I already said, I disagree with the gameplay being repetitive just due to the sheer variety of gameplay styles there are in it. But I also disagree when he says the boss battles aren't fun. I have a hell of a lot of fun fighting the bosses, because those are also varied and unique to each other. Uh, I would say the only ones that are remotely similar are the Haybot and the Giant Bear in the experiment, uh, because both of them involve you hitting a button on its back. But even then, the way you hit the button is different. So again, they're still different enough that I think it's fine. The pissing sections are probably the best example. You only make use of this for two sections out of the entire game, with the first section being really easy, and the other one being really annoying. I agree. I do think it is better in Live and Reloaded with the pissing sections, and he'll get to that in a minute. Uh, but I don't think they're that bad. I do think the Rock Solid one is really annoying. Uh, so I do agree to an extent with him on there, but again, that just shows more that there is variety in it. It's not all just repetitive. It's very different with each stage. The early game tutorializes things pretty well, but the moment the game moves on to the more complex stuff, like the pissing mechanic, for example, the tutorials suddenly disappear. I do think that is a fair criticism, that they don't really tell you how to do some of the later mechanics, but once you get a feel for the game, I feel like that's fair. I think that it does it does take a little bit of getting used to, but I think once you know what to do, it's really not that difficult. There's also a racing section in the game, because goodness knows no 3D platformer of the time could resist that craze. On paper, it's good gameplay. You've got simple to learn controls and a straightforward challenge. Problem is, they decide to stick these dinosaurs in the middle of the course, and their positioning is completely erratic. You have to go at full speed to catch up with the cavemen, but when you do that, the dinosaur will often move into a position you can't easily dodge. Hit him anywhere, and you die instantly. Mugged is actually one of my favorite chapters in the game in both versions, and I have a harder time with it than I do in Live and Reloaded. Uh, but I do think that uh, he has some points, but I also think they're not that big of a deal, because I can dodge the dinosaur just fine in Bad Fur Day most of the time. It's really in Live and Reloaded that I have a problem with it, because they, like, double your speed. Uh, but I think that, no, Mugged plays very fun. I think that's a very fun chapter of the game that has great gameplay, so... 
I don't agree wholeheartedly with these complaints. I can see where he's coming from with some of the criticisms, but I don't agree. I recalled this section being pretty annoying, and I did die a few times, but it's not nearly as bad as I remembered. Yeah, again, mugged in Bad Fur Day really isn't that difficult once you get used to it. I still struggled with it sometimes, but again, it's not as hard as the Live and Reloaded one for me personally. The moment you reach the two-thirds mark, however, Conquer's Bad Fur Day just becomes a third-person shooter. The game tries to ease you into it with the slingshot and the knife throwing, neither of which have reticles for some reason, but that's still not going to prepare you for when you have to start strafing. Let's get this out of the way right now. The shooting controls have not aged very well. I do agree, the controls have not aged very well. I still have fun playing the gun levels in Bad Fur Day, but I do think that the, the gun levels are better in Live and Reloaded. So, again, I do agree that the controls have not aged very well, but I still think the shooting sections are very fun. Frankly, I'm not one to shy away from unconventional shooting controls when the game walks you through it and it's executed well. Well, I'll definitely agree that they could have walked you through it a little bit better. I don't think it's that bad once you get the hang of it. The first shooting section in the game expects you to make a bunch of precision headshots with pinpoint accuracy right off the bat. Yeah, I'll agree. When you're coming into it blind, it may seem a little unreasonable, but in all honesty, I was able to figure it out pretty quickly. And the good news is that you can cheese the zombies and Spooky by standing on the tombstones and aiming down at them, or by just running past them in the manor. By yeah, the tombstone is very helpful in doing that, and running past them is what you kind of have to do in the manor, at least in the part where you're carrying the keys. By the time you reach its war, though, the game goes full-on shooter. I absolutely hated this chapter the first time I played it. I can see why. It's easily one of the most frustrating chapters in the game, but it's actually one of the best in my opinion, so I think that... Hating it is a little bit harsh, but I do understand being frustrated with it, especially the countdown section. While I enjoy it increasingly more with every playthrough, it's still my absolute least favorite part of the game by far. And again, I can see why, but I honestly don't agree with that. I think that it's great. I love its war. It's, it's very challenging, for sure. Some of the parts in it are very frustrating. I will say, I think Countdown is specifically one of the most annoying chapters in the game, so I get you on that. This whole joke of playing the brutality of war totally straight except with cute woodland creatures isn't all that funny. I don't know, I think it has its charm. The graphics are unpleasant to look at, and the gameplay is 90% shooting with dated awkward controls. I don't know about the graphics being unpleasant to look at, I think they're fine, but I do agree that the gameplay controls are a little bit, you know, janky and outdated. The first sections also keep alternating between platforming around these lasers and shooting the teddies. So Once again, giving it more variety, so again, I don't think the game's that repetitive. This chapter just drags on and on, thanks to the awful pacing and a bunch of difficulty spikes. I don't think the pacing is awful, I'll agree with the difficulty spikes, but awful pacing, I disagree wholeheartedly. I must have died ten times in this machine gun section just trying to figure out what I was supposed to be doing. And really, I found that section to be fairly easy, a little bit difficult to get there the first try, but like, once you get the hang of it, it's easy to dodge. I'll say that that is one of the areas where a lot of people get frustrated, which is why it was removed from live and reloaded. But, I don't think it's really as bad as people make it out to be. This escape sequence on the beach can eat a fucking dick! I actually agree with that statement, on both versions. Uh, it's frustrating on both versions of the game. Because again, that's the countdown section, which is easily the most annoying part of the game. You have to take cover behind these Czech hedgehogs to avoid the bazooka fire from these teddies, but while you're hiding there, the hedgehogs block your fire too. And in the time it takes for you to strafe out from behind and aim at the bears with the awkward controls, they'll more than likely shoot first and kill you instantly. Partially true, partially false there. If you aim right, you never have to leave out from under the cover. You can shoot them through it. You just have to make sure you're aiming good, and it's very, very precise. And I'll admit it is better in live and loaded because you get the machine gun, but I know you're going to get to that in a bit. It's a massive difficulty spike that comes completely out of nowhere and almost made me rage quit. Again, I understand. I've had a lot of difficulty with that section of the game myself. That pretty much sums up Conker's solo gameplay in a nutshell. It has a few genuinely enjoyable moments and a few fun or cathartic set pieces here and there, but for the most part it's either dull and repetitive, frustrating, or just not that interesting. This game could have really benefited from either doubling down on the platforming elements or doubling down on the shooter gameplay. Again, I disagree. I think it's the variety that makes it patently not repetitive, but again, we've been over this a few times. Variety is nice when all the components are interesting and done in service of the core gameplay, but Conquer doesn't do that. It is the prototypical early 2000s kitchen sink platformer.
Again, that is a statement that I wholeheartedly disagree with, and we've already been over multiple times. I think the variety was implemented well. So you're probably wondering how Live and Reloaded compares when it comes to gameplay. Well, there are actually way more differences than I could have ever imagined, but... Yes, Live and Reloaded completely overhauled the gameplay, and I would say for the most part, the gameplay is a hell of a lot smoother. But let's stick with the big stuff for now. Live and Reloaded carries over every chapter and subsection from the original game. From Mostly true, but they do change the machine gun section to remove the teddy that was on in the first place, and they remove the part with the electric eel. I do think you get to that, but still. So that means that many of the complaints I had about the original carry over to the remake. All the fetch quests, escort missions, repetitive minigames, and boss battles from the original game have carried over here. That Right, and again, and I've already made my opinion clear of where we disagree on those. That said, many of these sections have seen some changes. For example, the fetch quest in Pooh Mountain in the original version saw you dragging six pieces of sweet corn to the shithole in the center. The remake cuts this down to just three. And I ultimately do think that is for the better. So again, there are some changes I do really like in Live and Reloaded. It does make it easier but I do think it's for the better. The bull section in Sloprano has also limited the number of hits on each cow to get them to drink the prune juice to just one. In Rock Solid, the remake introduces strafing to the pissing controls, makes the pathway upstairs much more obvious, adds another ramp so you don't have to slog all the way around just to get sober again, and only requires you to roll one boulder into the secondary holes to free Barry from the cage. I think all of those changes are positive except for only having to do one boulder. Or since they made it easier, they should just kept it at two, because why make it that much easier? easier and shorter, because just one is a little too easy in my opinion. It also adds a bit of platforming at the end. Yeah, but I actually think the platforming they added is actually kind of annoying. I don't like that aspect, because it's very precise to get in the cage, so that's actually one negative in my opinion on Rock Solid. Also, I might be imagining things, but I swear the dinosaur in Mugged has a much more forgiving hitbox this time around. It might, but I honestly find Mugged on Live and Reloaded so much harder because you're moving faster and you die just as easily. It's it, I die so many more times on Live and Reloaded in that section than I do on Bad Fur Day. I actually beat this section on my first try. Which I find really odd that you struggled with it more in Bad Fur Day and I struggle with it a hell of a lot more in Live and Reloaded. Again, maybe it's just a matter of the way we play personally but I always had a much harder time in Live and Reloaded. Other sections have simply been made easier. The wasps seem to give you a wider berth in the remake, whereas in the original, they get right up on your ass. I think that's only a visual difference, because in either version, as long as you keep moving, the wasps will never get you, provided you never walk over one of the grassy sections that slow you down. So I think that's just a visual difference, because again, the wasp sections are super easy. The jumping boxes and barn boys were made smaller, making that section that slightest bit more pointless. I agree, I actually don't like that they made it way too easy in the box section on Live and Reloaded. Bouncing on the sunflower's boobs, which was surprisingly complex in the original for some reason, has been made a lot simpler here. Also, Yeah, I'll give you that one. The boob thing is kind of annoying in the original. So the electric eel section in It's War was removed in favor of a simple switch, which defeats the purpose of having the switch to begin with. Right, exactly. I think the electric eel section was important because it gave you another thing to do. I ultimately think that the electric eel section was kind of pointless anyway, so I mean the switch isn't that big of a deal, but I do prefer having that extra section there, so... In my opinion, that's better for Bad Fur Day. In other cases, the locations for some fetch quest items were changed. Yes, they added more bees and made it too easy. This set of tickly bees was moved from up here to down here, and one of the lady cogs was moved from in here to over there. Personally, I don't really mind most of these changes. Again, a lot of them, in my opinion, in some cases make the game too easy, but in some of them I actually like the relaxed difficulty, because some of the things in Bad Fur Day could be kind of irritating. But, like, moving the cogs and stuff I think was kind of pointless. I mean, you probably could have kept the electric eel section and the second hit and rock solid, but most of these sections were either really annoying, boring, or repetitive in the original. So anything that allows me to push through them quicker and get to the good stuff is alright by me. I mean, I get what you're saying, but I also think removing the gameplay is kind of dumb. And again, they never removed anything super substantial, but again, I do just think that's one more reason that Bad Fur Day can be better. By far the biggest difference in Live and Reloaded is the controls, which have seen a total overhaul across the board. And the remake takes full advantage of the dual analog for vastly superior controls. I agree, actually. The controls, for the most part, are way better in Live and Reloaded. I think that they're much, much smoother and much easier to do. I will, however, say I like the swimming better in Bad Fur Day. Because call me weird, but I like the swimming and flying sections better when they're inverted. When they're not inverted, it doesn't feel natural. And that's like the only time when inverted settings really do it for me, is when they're either swimming or flying. 
Uh, that's one thing that drove me nuts about Banjo-Tooie, for example, and luckily you could change it. Um, with Live and Reloaded, I don't think you can. It's always not inverted. A side effect is that the remake adds a bunch of mooks to kill throughout the game, which was something that was noticeably absent in the original. After all, what's the point of giving the character a weapon if there aren't any enemies until the shooting section? Look, here's the thing. I agree with you in concept there, but I actually think that the imps that they added all over the fucking map are some of the most annoying things in Live and Reloaded. They are fucking everywhere, and you have to do this three-hit combo to get them, or else it takes fucking forever, and they are fucking annoying. At first, I found this kind of annoying because of how awkward it felt, until I realized that there was a three-hit combo you could do by pulling the trigger in a particular rhythm. This combo easily clocks all the zombies and clang goblins. Yeah, again, exactly. I see what you're saying there. It's, it's not that hard once you get the rhythm down, but the problem is, is they're fucking everywhere everywhere blocking every single goddamn path they are so annoying i don't mind the zombie baby things because they're kind of cool but the uh, clang goblins as you called them or as i call them mine imps whatever you want to call them they're everywhere and they're really annoying and i don't like them swimming and flying controls which are essentially identical have been completely changed in the remake to take advantage of the dual analog the originals controlled just fine but it's definitely easier to see where you're going and move about than it was in the original the remake also vastly vastly extends Conker's breath meter for swimming sections, which were pretty goddamn tight in the original. By Again, with the swimming sections and the flying sections, I don't like that they're not inverted. Otherwise, I think they're better, but the fact that they're not inverted anymore, I hate. And the extended breath meter, I think, is ultimately good, because it adds an extra layer of easiness to it, which in this case, I think is a good thing, because some of the underwater sections can be a little annoying. But overall, I do think the swimming and flying are better in Bad Fur Day, personally. By far the greatest improvement to the controls, and I bet you all saw this coming, is the shooting controls. I cannot even begin to describe how much of an improvement this is. If you've ever played a mainstream shooter over the past 10 years, you should have absolutely no problem here. The strafing is on the left stick, aiming is on the right, and because of the better analog sensitivity, aiming and shooting at things is a snap. Plus, because it makes use of the same lock strafe scheme as the baseball bat, the remake does a much better job easing you into it. Like All absolutely excellent points. Again, you will not hear me arguing this. I do think that Live and Reloaded has the better shooting sections, hands down. All of the shooting levels are better for the most part in Live and Reloaded. Even the sections where you shoot in place are a lot more fun thanks to the simple addition of an aiming reticle. Again, while I do agree, I think the reticle makes those sections too easy. Uh, I actually would have rather they didn't have it, because it makes it too easy and adds no challenge. And really, the better controls make all the difference in the world when it comes to Spooky and It's War. The remake actually adds a lot more enemies for you to shoot at, but because the controls actually worked with me, I found myself wanting to shoot the zombies because I was enjoying it this time. Yeah, again, I'm gonna sound like a broken record here, but again, Spooky, It's War, and Heist are better in Live and Reloaded. There's no way around it. The shooting sections are better. That shitty section where you have to dodge the Teddy's turret has been removed altogether, and the beach escape now allows you to shoot at the instant kill bazooka teddies with your regular machine gun instead of the slow bazooka. I don't like that they removed the original Teddy from the machine gun. I get why they did, because it was kind of an, an annoying part for a lot of people. Um, but I still have trouble on the beach section. I still have just as much trouble. Uh, cause they still kill you so quickly. I will admit the movement makes it a little bit easier, but it's still really tough. Live and Reloaded introduces loading screens, but they're infrequent and last maybe 5 to 10 seconds. Sometimes they take a lot longer than that. I think you're downplaying them. They can be really annoying with how long they take. Anti-gravity chocolate pieces respawn faster. The game will save your lives counter for whenever you reboot the console for another session. And the pause menu now reveals how many cash wads you found in an area. Again, I think that those are all positive changes. It's War adds a new mini-boss in the hospital section. Uh, yes, kind of. That character was kind of in Bad Fur Day, but he was a lot more understated. They added in a little intro cutscene with him and they made him stronger. Uh, but he was still kind of in Live and He was still kind of in Bad Fur Day, but he just looked a little bit different rather than having a completely different outfit. Instead, he just had like a big like circle thing. Whatever those metal circles on Doctor's headbands are called, he had that on him. Uh, but that was the only really visible difference in Bad Fur Day. Whereas in Live and Reloaded, they made it a lot more obvious, hey, this is a mini-boss. And again, they did beef him up, and I ultimately think he's way cooler in, in Live and Reloaded. There are a bunch of other minor changes here and there that generally amount to added convenience, which is alright by me. Again, for me, I like it in some areas, in other areas, not so much. It's kind of a double-edged sword. 
The last change that I should mention, that I probably should have addressed earlier when I talked about the presentation, is what seems to be the single greatest complaint people have about Live and Reloaded. And it really amounts to the most harmless thing in the world. Certain swear words that were uncensored in the original are now censored in the remake. Here is the reason you missed the point on why this is a big deal entirely. Number one, I'm against censorship wholesale. Number two, the fact is, this game was supposed to be less censored. It was originally going to be Conquer Live and Uncut. They were going to uncensor absolutely everything. So the fact that they just didn't, and then they censored it more, makes no sense. Not to mention the fact that in the multiplayer, you unlock Potty Mouth mode, which makes the multiplayer dialogue completely uncensored. So why is the story mode more censored when you can completely uncensor the multiplayer dialogue? Now granted, with the multiplayer one, you have to unlock it by beating the game, but still, I think it's a little bit stupid and inconsistent that they would censor the campaign more while giving you the option to completely uncensor the multiplayer. Yes, there are seriously people who will dismiss Live and Reloaded as a bad remake just because of that. While I do think people are too harsh for dismissing it because of that, again, you missed the fucking point. It's an insult to what the game was supposed to be. And why take away that? I mean, it doesn't really change anything. So that's why I do think people overreact to it, but because of how anti-censorship it is, it just feels like a big fuck you to me, because the game was supposed to be uncensored. Maybe there are other reasons that go along with it, but that's the only one I ever really hear. And I just explained to you why it's a bigger deal than you're making it out to be. I also do understand and agree with you that people do overblow it, and dismissing the game for that is a stupid fucking reason. So, what are the facts here? Well, the original the original game left the words shit, twat, bastard, ass, bitch, asshole, and fellatio uncensored with fuck being censored. Live and Reloaded censors the words fuck, shit, twat, asshole, and fellatio but leaves bitch, ass, and bastard uncensored. This whole thing doesn't really make much sense. Like, why is asshole so much worse than ass as to warrant censorship? Exactly, it's just like TV. They would bleep out asshole on TV but not ass. Makes no sense. Is fellatio really too hot for TV? No, it's not, because fellatio is a technical term, so no. I'm not really sure whose idea this was, seeing as the Xbox was marketed as a console for mature gamers. Exactly, so there's even more reason it just doesn't make any fucking sense. Do I think the added censorship is a major knock against the game that single-handedly ruins the magic of the original and turns this remake into an inferior product? Nope. Not even close. In fact, it might just be the most overblown criticism against a remake I've ever heard. I would be more understanding if Rare had removed controversial cutscenes from the game or something, but if anything, they were just made gorier, cruder, and more intense in some instances compared to the original. I agree, they did, and they even actually restored a deleted scene to the It's War chapter that originally was gone. They put in a scene where Rodent is with two other squirrels on the sticks about to be shot. Um, and the two other squirrels were removed in Bad Fur Day. But the deleted version was restored in Live and Reloaded, so I actually think that that was one area where they actually did uncensor it. So I do like that, and I do agree. They actually made it a lot more gory and graphic. Curse words on their own are not funny. I agree, there needs to be some sort of context that makes them funny. That comedy is all about context and surprising the audience. Curse words are just another tool to set up and pay off on a comedic premise. Again, I agree completely with him on that, but I do again think he missed the point on the censorship with Live and Reloaded. Conquer as a whole is banking on one larger joke. The fact that characters you're used to seeing in kiddie platformers are now smoking, drinking booze, defecating in public, violently exploding in a bloody mess, and saying curse words. It violates your expectations and makes you laugh. At that point, whether the curse words are censored or not essentially becomes a matter of semantics. I see what you're saying with that, but again, I don't like any censorship of any kind, so I have a very low tolerance for it. That said, though, even as I said before, I think people do overblow it in the case of Live and Reloaded, because it doesn't really break the game. It's fine. Like, I don't like it, but it doesn't ruin the game, and Live and Reloaded is still great in many ways. Since you still understand the larger joke the game is trying to tell. Cartoon characters and kitty platformers don't normally swear at you. Case in point, the word fuck is censored in the N64 version, and last I checked, all these cutscenes are still funny. Get your ass in there. There's these cows. Get them in there. 
Get him to crap, and I'll make you a ball of poop. Again, while I agree, but again, live and uncut was what this was supposed to be. It was supposed to uncensor everything. That said, I can hardly agree that bleeping out a couple curse words ruins the magic of the original when A, the censoring is so poor that the words stay obvious, B, the larger joke still connects, and C, the original censored some words to begin with. Again, I do agree with you in some aspects here. It's the, really the concept of the thing, and I realize I'm sounding like a broken record here. So, again, you missed the point because you didn't really know about Live and Uncut. Can't necessarily blame you for that because it's a little bit more obscure. But also, I do agree that people overblow it. Again, that's probably the last I'm going to say on it because it's just kind of getting repetitive at this point with me saying this. Even if I agree that this was a big problem, I'd still implore us all to weight it against everything the remake does right. Think about all the stuff I've told you over the past 40 odd minutes, all the tiny and major improvements that address hiccups in the original, and stack them against the censorship thing. If these two games were entirely the same except for this one thing, then yeah, I would call it the inferior version too. But I really think you ought to judge this remake more holistically, and not get bogged down in what amounts to maybe 30 total seconds of cutscene content out of the game's running time. Bottom line, while I can agree that the added beeps weren't necessary, I can't agree that they single-handedly turned Live and Reloaded into an inferior product. Again, final word on the matter, I do agree the game has more good than bad in that regard. Uh, and I do think you should look at multiple aspects of it before coming to that conclusion. The only other thing worth mentioning is obviously the multiplayer. This is probably the biggest difference between the two versions, which offer their own exclusive multiplayer content. The right, and in my opinion, Bad Fur Day had vastly superior multiplayer, though the Live and Reloaded multiplayer is still great and has an added chapter called Chapter X, which is basically like a story add-on. N64 version has a grab bag of modes. Heist, Total War, Colors, Race, etc. Many involve the shooting gameplay from Spooky and It's War, and use the same shooting controls, so good luck finding someone who knows how they work. I had no problem with that through my entire life. Me and my brothers and my friends would play it all the time, and still occasionally do go back and play it, so I don't know what you're on about. The multiplayer in the remake, as far as I can tell, is very similar to most shooters of the time. You've got a whole bunch of classes you can choose from, each with their own weapons, a variety of maps, and a few modes. Conquer Live and Reloaded was supposedly one of the top 10 most popular games on Xbox Live before Microsoft pulled the plug in the OG Xbox in 2010. Yeah, I played some Live and Reloaded Xbox Live. It was really fun. I wish they didn't discontinue it. And you can still play it online with people in the post-Xbox Live era using X-Link Kai. So now granted for that you need a modded console, but yeah, that's still really cool. I do like X-Link Kai and things like that. There's a lot of cool things in the Xbox modding community out there. Surprisingly, there's also a multiplayer prequel slash sequel to Conker's Bad Fur Day called Chapter X. But yeah, and I brought that up before. Chapter X is great, although pretty difficult. The story elements are just there, and I couldn't even beat the first mission because of the strict time limit and how much punishment these explosive barrels take before they explode. Yeah, Chapter X is hard. I recorded part of a playthrough and uploaded it. I couldn't even get past the first level in that playthrough, I don't think. Uh, I have beat the er, the vanilla version of Chapter X before, which only has three levels, but playing on Worm or Higher, to, which you need for the full experience, is way too difficult. So, quick mistake I made. I switched Worm and Vanilla. Worm is the easy difficulty, Vanilla is the medium. But other than that, my point still stands. As for the N64 modes, it's all just there, and it's nothing too special. I think that's really unfair. The N64's multiplayer is fucking great. I absolutely love that. That was one of my favorite things to do. Just gather up some friends and family and play together. I, I think it's great. Uh, so I disagree wholeheartedly. I take it you probably didn't grow up playing this like I did. All that said, you're probably wondering what the Rare Replay port of the N64 version plays like. Are there any improvements or enhancements that help it catch up with the Xbox version? Well, not really. Rather than building a new game engine and improving the aspect ratio or frame rate like the Xbox 360 ports of the Banjo games, Conker's Bad Fur Day and Rare Replay is simply an emulation of the original N64 ROM. And Nothing wrong with a straight port, especially since it's the most affordable way to get any Conker game currently. In fact, you'll get a nigh identical experience by playing the game in Project 64 and 960p. The only real change is that they slightly altered some graphics to remove the Nintendo references. One thing I should mention is that the graphics are up rather than upscaled. So while you get finer looking character models and nice looking textures, you also get blocky looking 2D elements. Up-resing and upscaling both have their pros and cons, and it really boils down
down to preference which is better. Yeah, for me the game still looks fine either way, so I'm fine with the Rare Replay version. Beyond all that, Conquer on Rare Replay is the exact same thing as the original, all the way down to the dated shooting controls. Un partially true, but partially not. Again, it does have two analog sticks instead of the C button, so that does make it slightly better. Overall, I'd say that if you own an Xbox One, Rare Replay is a suitable option if you want to play the original Conquer's Bad Fur Day on console, especially since you get a whole bunch of other games in the same package. Now yeah, Rare Replay is a great and affordable collection. I recommend everybody get it if you have an Xbox One. That said, I really wish they had bothered to update the game to appease modern gaming sensibilities. I do think an updated control, scre control scheme would have benefit benefited it, but I don't think it's that big of a deal, because a straight port is still great. They added in achievements for it, and again, the game is pretty pricey out there now, so I think for most people this is probably the easiest way to get it. Another brief thing I forgot to mention is uh, the multiplayer is actually kind of broken on the Rare Replay version. Like, sometimes it doesn't load properly. I haven't checked if they've patched this or not. Uh, but when I've tried to play multiplayer with people, sometimes on Rare Replay it just crashes and doesn't work, or it's really slow and framey, whereas it still works fine on my Nintendo 64. And if I'm playing the multiplayer on my own in Rare Replay, it works fine. It's just when you try to play multiplayer actually multiplayer with multiple people, it has problems. But when you're playing solo with just the computer, it plays fine on Rare Replay. But again, best multiplayer experience is probably just the actual 64. How well does Conquer Live and Reloaded stack up with Conquer's Bad Fur Day on Nintendo 64? Well, let's go out of order for a change and start with what I thought of the game itself. The first time I played Conquer's Bad Fur Day, it blew me away. I loved it so much that I was prepared to call it one of my favorite games of all time. But Same, and I still do. But with every passing playthrough, especially with the three full playthroughs I did for this episode, my impressions of the game just weakened. That's not to say there aren't a lot of positives to mention. The graphics are A plus for N64, the soundtrack is catchy and varied, and if you're into the humor, the story is a lot of fun on your first playthrough. I've played through this game so many times, and I think the story always holds up, not just on your first playthrough. Now granted, I don't just play it back to back to back to back, I take some time in between each playthrough, get, don't get me wrong. But I still think it holds up, and there's a reason it's still my favorite game of all time. Unfortunately, Conquer doesn't get much more than a passing grade when it comes to the most important thing of all, the gameplay. For Again, there's a debate to be had there of gameplay versus story. I like both, but I do tend to lean more towards story than a lot of people would. So I think that that's not an objective thing to say. But I do think, you know, in gameplay it does have some shortcomings, sure. But I do think that it being passable enough for the story and being fun and varied, I do think, makes up for that. Most of the game is spent completing pointless fetch quests and plotting escort missions. Okay, you bring up the escort missions a lot. There's literally like two of them in the entire game. So I think you're exaggerating just a little bit there. And the shooting gameplay is difficult to go back to and dominates the last third of the game. The last third of the game is the best part of the game, and in my opinion, Live and Reloaded does it better. So I get where you're coming from with that, but I don't think the shooting is as bad as you make it out to be in Bad Fur Day. The remainder of the gameplay, which ranges from pissing on things, to hoverboard racing, to riding a bull, to flying around as a bat, is either not that interesting or really frustrating. The well, I'll agree with the frustrating, I don't agree with it not being interesting. Problem is that the game is so busy jumping from one thing to another that it never fleshes out any of its ideas beyond their basis level. Be Again, I like the variety. I think that that's fine the way they implemented it. Because of that, the game never really gets any better than average. While very little of it stoops so low to become terrible, none of it ever stands so tall as to become great either. For Again, I disagree. I think the gameplay is pretty great. Like, again, there are elements of it that I understand where you're coming from, because I do think the gameplay is not its strongest suit. But I do think you are being a little bit harsh. Frankly, if it wasn't for the story, I really don't think this game would have developed the cult following in a joys today. The I do kind of agree with you there. I do think that without the story, it wouldn't. Uh, but again, the story is so good, especially with the tragic ending. And again, I'm such a sucker for tragedy, so I do think that Conquer was kind of the the genesis of that. I think Conquer's why I love tragedy so much, because of the ending. Thing is, on a first playthrough, you're not really thinking too hard about the gameplay because you're focused on the comedy and the character interactions, and you're pretty much just going along for the ride. The problem with relying so heavily on shock humor, however, is that it can only really shock you the first time. So on subsequent playthroughs, you already have the game's number, and after a while, the cutscenes become boring to sit through because of how slow, numerous, and unskippable they are when you start a new save. It's 
No, the cutscenes are what makes the game, dude. I enjoy them every playthrough. I have no idea what you're talking about there. I have never gotten sick of those cutscenes. The problem here is that Conquer doesn't have the gameplay it needs to back up the story. The best video games, in my opinion, are the ones you can come back to any day, any time. And I personally can do that with Conquer. I don't know why you have such difficulty doing that. I love Conquer. I can pick it up and play it any day. The problem is that Conquer's bad fur day blows its load in the first playthrough, and after that, you're just left with sloppy seconds. With more interesting, focused, and developed gameplay, and the ability to skip cutscenes regardless of whether you've seen them before, I might feel more of an incentive to revisit it despite the deteriorating story. The skipping cutscenes thing is something you can easily resolve by just playing through it on chapters. Now, I realize Chapters is not going to show you the opening cutscene, but just start a new save on Save File 2, watch the opening cutscene if you want to, and then play Chapters if you want to skip the others. Simple as that. Really, just about everything I said about the original version carries over to Live and Reloaded as well. That said, I still think this is the vastly preferable way to play Conker's Bad Fur Day. Remake. As always, I define a re-release with a remake score as one which smooths over the flaws of the original and adds new content. Conker Live and Reloaded does just that. The graphics, subject to the few visual quirks I mentioned, are a monumental improvement over the original game and some of the best I've witnessed on the original X. Box. The music sounds even better than ever thanks to the addition of real instruments and reimagined elements for other tracks. The quality of the original cutscene recordings has dramatically increased thanks to the bigger storage medium. By far the greatest improvement, however, is the control, which single-handedly elevates the entire experience. Conquer has simply never handled better, all thanks to the Xbox's dual analog. Again, I do agree with a lot of those points you made, and the control is drastically better in Live and Reloaded, I'll fully admit that. But there's a certain charm that Bad Fur Day has that you only really get with the polygons, and though I think that the graphics are way better in Live and Reloaded, there's a certain charm that is kind of lost between the two. I think the removal of a couple of small sections from the game do kind of make it a little bit lower on my list. I'm not going to deny the nostalgia factor as well that does kind of elevate it. But the multiplayer is another thing that definitely contributes to it, because overall the multiplayer is so much better, in my opinion, in Bad Fur Day. And of course there is the censorship, which to me is still something that I do dock at points for, just I don't obsess over it. Overall, actually, I would say that Live and Reloaded and Bad Fur Day are both equally valid to be considered better than the other for different reasons. I personally like Bad Fur Day more, but that's really more of a matter of taste. I think it really comes down to what you're looking for. I would say most new players would probably be better able to pick up Live and Reloaded than they would Bad Fur Day. But, that said, Bad Fur Day to me has just has a special place and much more longevity. Um, so I think it's really just what you're looking for. Uh, but I also think that they both have a reason to exist, and that is why I've played through both multiple times, because they're both such great experiences. So, I think that they're both great. Uh, and I think you're equally valid in liking either one more than the other. But personally, as a matter of taste, I prefer Bad Fur Day. While I still don't think the gameplay is all that great, I can at least credit Live and Reloaded with trimming down or speeding up some of the fetch quests and boring stuff, while also removing the frustrating elements from the It's War chapter. Again, I think trimming down was a double-edged sword, because some of it I was in favor of it, some of it not so much. As far as with the It's War chapter, I still, I do think that ultimately it is better in Live and Reloaded, and I do think some of the stuff they trimmed out is maybe for the better, but I do think that the removal of certain sections does kind of rub me the wrong way. I like that they added in that one cutscene that was removed from the original Bad Fur Day, so I think that that's better. Um, I think the machine gun section is better on the beach than the bazooka section on the beach in Bad Fur Day, but they're still both incredibly frustrating. While this does result in Live and Reloaded being an overall easier game than the original, I don't really mind that, seeing as the original's idea of difficulty often amounted to add an extra hit point to each round of the thing. Thus, this remake improves the visuals, sound, and controls while also attenuating the mediocrity of the original gameplay. Again, I get all of his points here, and like I said, I think it's perfectly valid to prefer this or that. Either way, they're both great games. And I do think he is a little bit harsh on the gameplay. While I do agree, the gameplay is not its strongest suit, it's nothing super spectacular, I really didn't get the same vibe of, it, vibe of it being as bad as he said it was. And I've replayed it multiple times, even in recent years. Like, just as recent as 2019, I was doing a live stream of Live and Reloaded, which I will continue at some point in the future. Not to mention, I have played through Bad Fur Day on the channel back in, what, was it 2016, 2015, one of the two? 
and I will be doing another playthrough of Bad Fur Day later on to be a little bit better because that one had some issues because of the way I recorded it. It also throws in a completely revamped multiplayer mode for good measure, and while it's not something I'll get much out of, I can see why it was so popular in the Xbox's Twilight years. Be Again, the new multiplayer is also a double-edged sword. I do think Live Reloaded has a great multiplayer. However, Bad Fur Day had so much more variety and fun with the multiplayer, I think Bad Fur Day's multiplayer was way better. And much more unique. Live Reloaded was much more just contemporary shooter type stuff. And while it was still very fun, it doesn't hold a candle, in my opinion, to Bad Fur Day's multiplayer. And the multiplayer is actually one of the deal breakers for me that makes me prefer Bad Fur Day over Live and Reloaded. Because of that, and in spite of some criticisms I do have, it is my opinion that Conquer Live and Reloaded is the definitive way to play Conquer's Bad Fur Day. Not to mention a vastly cheaper way. Not only will you save a good 50 bucks compared to an N64 cart, but it's fully compatible with your Xbox 360 and will look great on your new TV. But for Live and Reloaded, it is also, as far as I know, backwards compatible with Xbox One now, which it wasn't when he made this video. So, Live and Reloaded is a great way to play it if you can get your hands on it. But that said, I'm not prepared to bump this game up to a replay score for several reasons. For one, because the multiplayer is different between the two versions, there's still a reason, however small, to go back to the original. Beyond that, however, I feel that despite all the improvements, the remake doesn't quite reach its true potential. The animations, though mostly one-to-one -one with the original game, with some improvements and neutral differences, are inferior to those found in other mainstream platforming games at the time. The lack of of moving eyeballs is really distracting, and a few other visual details just don't look that great. I also think there were some missed opportunities for new additions, like a new chapter, seeing as the game isn't even all that long to begin with. And sure, while I think it's an overblown criticism, the added bleeps on certain curse words wasn't necessary and is a minor ding against the presentation. Well, I think that he did an excellent job providing his points. I think that this was a fantastic video. And overall, I agree with him in a lot of areas, and I disagree with him in a few. Again, I do think a lot of it comes down to taste, but I do recommend playing either Bad Fur Day or Live and Reloaded, or preferably both, because I love both games. I'd even recommend checking out Pocket Tales. It's not the same thing at all, but it's another Conquer game, and Diddy Kong Racing is kind of a Conquer game, or was the introduction of Conquer anyway, so I'd still recommend that, too. Uh, but whatever you do, do not play Young Conquer. That game is garbage and shouldn't exist. Anyway, I'm Fugitive Red Eye, and this is a lot less angry than the last one, because I actually think this guy made a fantastic video and just wanted to do a cute little response to it, because I'm quirky like that. And now I sound like a faggot for saying that, so I'm gonna end the video. Toodles.